Hi, and welcome friends. My name is Jess, and this is Dr. Debt Free, where I discuss tips and tricks I'm using to get out of my multiple six-figure debt, how I'm creating healthy money habits, and where I hope to inspire you to live a healthy and happy life on your current budget. Debt is something that a lot of people don't like to talk about. I think money in general can actually be a taboo topic for a lot of people. But the fact of the matter is that a lot of people are going into debt these days, whether it's to pay for school, to get a mortgage on a house, or even just credit card debt. With the lack of education about personal finances in our school system, I think it's important that we become comfortable with talking about it, with educating ourselves, and even for advocating for ourselves. So with that being said, today I'm going to be an open book discussing the amount of debt that I have, how I got into this mess in the first place, and what my plan is moving forward to become debt-free. Now, my debt began in 2015. I had just finished my undergrad, fortunately debt-free, um, and was headed into my postgraduate program, which I decided was chiropractic. Um which is a four year program. I ended up paying $25,000 in tuition for each year. Um, and that wasn't including books or other supplies or my living expenses, which at the time, um, the college is in Toronto, which if you're not from Canada is one of the most expensive cities to live in in Canada. So I had worked all throughout my undergraduate degree, but um, the little savings nest egg that I had saved up didn't even cover my first year of living expenses for when I was in chiropractic college. So I had to resort to other methods of paying for my tuition and paying for my living expenses, or I chose to go that route. Um, so I ended up applying for a professional line of credit um, and then I also received some funding um, from government student loans. And while I was at Cairo school, I was also able to generate some income over those four years uh, working at an ice cream shop in a ritzy area in downtown Toronto. Um, and this income actually helped me cover the monthly interest payments that I had to pay for my line of credit which at the end of my four-year degree was actually around $500 per month. So it was pretty hefty. So getting into it, I graduated school in June of 2019 with a total debt of $173,170. And what that was, was in my professional line of credit, I had maxed that out at 140,000, that's a lot of money. Um, and then I also had government student loans, which in Ontario is known as OSAP, that amounted to $33,170. So that's what I graduated with in June of 2019. And if you don't believe it, I made matters worse, not too shortly after that. I bought a new car, I know, rookie mistake. Um, so I ended up having a car loan with my bank that amounted to $34,457. So with that total, my total debt is over $200,000 at $207,000, $627 flat. So that's a lot of money. Fortunately, my father bought out my car loan from the bank and now I'm only paying him a fixed amount each month at 0% interest. Um, and because of the way that the world has been over the last couple of years, my student loans are also at 0% interest. So the only loan that is currently um, charging me interest is my professional line of credit, which has also lowered in the last couple of years, but it is still 2.45% interest. Um, so yeah, it's pretty hefty. 
So I have paid off a small chunk of this ginormous debt. Um, and as of December 22nd, 2021, which is today, my total debt is standing at $194,833.02. Um, so I have been able to pay off a total of $12,793.98 since June of 2019, which I calculated is actually 6.1% of my total debt, which, you know, I'm proud to have moved in the right direction over the last few years, but I think we can do better than this. I do have bigger and better goals for 2022. Um, and I will be making payments to each of these debts, um, of course, just with the way that the interests are and also just the sheer amounts. I will be tackling my line of credit with all of the extra money I have um, on top of the minimum payment. Just with the chance of interest rates rising this year, I don't want to be paying $500 a month in interest again. That's just crazy. Um, like There's so, so much better so many better uses for that money so that's goal number one um and then for the time being um my car loan is still staying at zero percent interest and my osap is also staying at zero percent interest until march of 2023 so until then i'll just be really making the minimum payments on those two um, just so i can really focus and knock down that line of credit debt um I definitely want to get rid of this debt quicker than I have been working on it. Um, last few years have been tough, um, even last year because of the pandemic. Um, you know, I was off for four months of work, which that's a lot, especially when I'm still having to make payments on insurances and other expenses that I have. So I will be talking a little bit more about specifics of my 2022 financial goals in my next video. I want you to let me know below, what is one thing you're proud of from this past year? And what is one goal you have for 2022?